My name's Dylan. I just put a PhD in physics on hold to make some fun things. Since I quit my PhD, I've been making some tech things. So I'm a programmer. I was doing computational theoretical astrophysics. Let me show you what I've been doing since with my programming stuff. Um, I dropped out basically. Uh, it was kind of always my plan. And I want to get financially secure before I do physics and stuff because you get paid like a peasant and um, you know it's a struggle to survive. My first course of action was to make this thing, KelVPN. Um, it's the world's first post-quantum VPN. So it's, that sounds wild, I know, but it's just got post-quantum cryptography. That also sounds wild, I know. That is just a new kind of encryption algorithm, okay? It's gonna be very important because powerful quantum computers potentially right around the corner. We know about Shaw's algorithm. We've also calculated if you had about a million qubits with Shaw's algorithm, you could break RSA, elliptic curve, cryptography. Guess what? That's what you know. VPNs and pretty much all internet encryption uses as their encryption algorithms. One problem is capture now, decrypt later attacks, right? So like people could steal data right now. Governments, secret agencies could be stealing data. Uh, you just store it until you have one of these useful quantum computers and then you basically have all the secrets, all of your nudes on the internet. No, just a couple things if you don't care about protecting your data. If you wanna get cheaper subscriptions to like Spotify, Netflix, YouTube Premium, you should use this, right? You log into a server in another country, a cheaper country where the you know the, the the dollar is cheaper and you get a cheaper rate. Anyway, and then two things really quickly. I'm not going to talk about them as much. AI my interior. You take a picture of your interior, your room. You turn it into any interior design style you want. Oh, that's a good result. Damn, look at these. So you can do use it for free or you can pay for it. And then there's also AI my cars, which was um. You know, no, I didn't make this because I'm a huge Fast and the Furious fan, I promise. Um, or maybe I did. But if you want a time machine, I can I can build you a time machine now. DMC DeLorean, take a picture of your car, and voila. 20 seconds later, and it does that. As children... That's a moment. We fear the dark. Is that my boy Carl Sagan? No way. No way. I didn't know that. That's cool. Anything might be out there. They they know what the nerds want. And they, they've given, they've delivered. The unknown troubles us. There are those who say we should not inquire too closely into who else might be living in that darkness. OMG. Better not to know. Oh my god, that was physics. But we continue to search. Life looks for life. Oh my god, that's the that's the great rip. Great rip. January? January? I'm not gonna lie, I'm used to like Netflix putting up these trailers and we get it like in a week. I am annoyed now. I thought I was gonna be able to watch this in like a week or two. Sad. So is this a movie or a TV series? Does anyone know? I think it I think it's a movie. Because I remember seeing the Chinese were turning this into a movie because it's like their biggest sci fi book in like ever. By the way, the Chinese TV show produced is officially on YouTube with English subs and covers the first book almost page by page. So it's a TV show. Okay, that's good to know. I thought it was a movie. Okay, so let's break down. There was a lot of science in here. And then I want to talk about the three-body problem because you might have heard some fantastical things about how we, you know, it's impossible to solve for the three-body problem. Incorrect. Wrong. But let's, one more nerd take. This is wonderful, right? Because I, the, Carl Sagan's voice didn't kick in for a, a minute. I mean, 
I, I mean, it's more like 10 seconds, but I say this is wonderful because this bit reminds me of Contact, right? You know, and you've seen Contact. Carl Sagan wrote the book, Contact, and you've got, you know, uh, you know the woman listening, and this is, you, you've got like that sound. So it's almost like an ode to that, which is beautiful. She's, she's very beautiful. I got two Chinese brothers, by the way. Just a fun little fact. I guess this is a good point to mention um, the three-body problem. Why is it called the three-body problem? Why are we looking at some kind of like Chinese socialist, I shouldn't say social, like uh, societal revolution? Uh, well, that's kind of like the, the theme, major theme of the, the book, right? So they basically tie together the three-body problem and how it relates to this main story to how like social dynamics i guess is one way to put it so basically the three-body problem is famous for being like unsolvable only that it's not <laughs> and i'll tell you in just a moment but just assume it's unsolvable so the, the book does the book thinks it's unsolvable it compares how that is kind of like perfecting society you know getting a perfect society is kind of an it seems like an impossible problem as well and so it's kind of like juxtaposing those and so this is what we're seeing here i'm not gonna there's no spoilers this guy is an important plays an important role clearly as children we so does she i'm not gonna spoil anything dark. that is a big radio dish used for radio astronomy um bounces electromagnetic signals off it if you we don't need to we'll talk about the interest very cool i really like the theme song playing in the background I th it's pretty neat it's pretty hacker-esque anything might be out there i loved carl's words in the background i've obviously heard him say this stuff before i think i've heard everything carl has, has said no <laughs> troubles i love this guy did you guys enjoy him in now um, that moonfall movie that was fun yes. there are those oh we got some numbers look at these numbers we got some times they've got some they got some code it looks like it's written in blood bit of a murder mystery for all the pretty much all the humans with every human who Obsessed with murdering other humans. Those who say we should not I'm really breaking this one down, aren't I? Inquire Numbers. too closely. I still see it. Into who else might be living in that darkness. Guy's definitely a physicist. Am I wrong? Better not to know. That's that's probably an alien. That's cool. That, that's even cooler. So what are you looking at there? Well, this could be a good point to start talking about the three-body problem in a bit more of a serious way because um, these circles look like they're representing some kind of um, orbital dynamics, celestial mechanics. So actually, no, let's one full take nerd watch and then we'll come back to probably that point. I really like the visuals here. This was kind of epic. She's just got like a katana blade and she's just walking on lava. As you do. I don't know why there was a horse on fire. Not going to say what's going on here. Well, I, did you guys see this? This looks like it's the um, neutrino detector. Um, which is, you know, a very cool experiment. Uh, it was the first to detect neutrinos. Neutrinos are like ghost basically the ghosts of particles kind of like me socially they very rarely interact with other particles um very hard to detect so we're not we don't need to talk about that too much more but just a fun little reference they've got in <laughs> clearly a physicist that might not be that neutrino experiment place someone should know the um name of it in in the chat um but we continue to search it's the one in um, Neil deGrasse Tyson's version of Cosmos that he remade, which was Carl Sagan's Cosmos originally, and the book is great. And then Neil deGrasse Tyson in the first season of Cosmos, um, he was floating around in a little, you know, tugboat-looking thing in that neutrino detector. In like 
Life looks for life. So this bit, I'm not going to reveal what's happening here, but it is, it's going to be epic to see. And it has to do with the three body motion. Um, I don't think I should say anything about this bit. So if you thought this kind of looks, it, it's actually like hard sci-fi, all right? So there's also like a, it involves virtual reality, which is really cool to a great deal. Uh, it's got a lot going on in this book series and highly recommend. It doesn't matter what you're into. I think you'll find something in this book series that you'll enjoy. Where is the little orbital symbol on the ground? Here it is. So let's talk about this three body problem, three body motion. What is the three body problem? What is this three body motion you're talking about? Well, you know, this, we've been trying to solve this for like 300 years, right back from Newtonian's, uh, you know, the stuff he gave us, basically, you can use Newtonian mechanics to basically work out in the context of celestial mechanics, how planets move around the sun and just how they move right uh and if you know you know positions velocities you can calculate in principle where they're gonna go you know their motion arbitrarily far into the future in principle okay unfortunately it's a lot more complicated than that because you know that's the case for two bodies but when you add another body the the dynamics the way they orbit is it becomes chaotic they're kind of like these exquisite dances and they're just it looks like we actually call them pseudo random okay because they're not random they're deterministic but uh, if you wait an arbitrarily long enough time it's like they're random so we call them pseudo random and this actually enables us to use like uh, statistical mechanics to solve for this stuff but let's back up um we should probably start with who like the history, you got to go through the history of it, all right? So for a long time, people thought this was unsolvable. And they're like, what are we going to do? <laughs> and then, of course, Euler, the one and only Euler, everyone pronounces it Euler, E-U-L-E-R, the famous mathematician, the, the goat, right? Everyone, it's, it's Euler. He actually found a, um, so I should say as well, analytically, we didn't think this was solvable. For a long time but actually that didn't matter for a long time because computers didn't exist analytically is like by hand euler famously found a solution um but only under very specific circumstances of course there's always a caveat right and so the the solution he found was basically you know if um you have there's also other sort of things which you know kind of work but euler found if you have these bodies in, in a line or on like opposite sides there's an easy solution because of the um, symmetry. Uh, and then also, what's his name? Lagrange found a solution as well. And if if the bodies make like an equilateral triangle, it also results in this uh, symmetry problem. And that's actually where the Lagrange points come from, you know, in space. where And that's where we park things because of all this. It's really neat, actually. How have we solved it any further? Basically, what you can do is even if you have three bodies multiple bodies okay um and you can sort of edit, you know zoom in slow down the time sort of thing right and um you can calculate the dynamics of what's going to happen next in a tiny little time step uh, and you can do that for each time step and this is actually what's called uh, numerical integration and you do this on computers and so with numerical integration, that's basically what we call an n-body simulation. And this is like when I was doing, looking at the, the history of the universe and si trying to simulate the universe and simulating galaxies and stuff, you, you're doing these big n-body simulations um, where you're basically just simulating gravity and particles. And it's doing numerical integration. It's adding up each, it's like calculating the forces, the gravitational sort of forces, acting on these bodies at each little time step like exactly analytically and then you run you jump forward another time step and then you do it again to do that by hand is not really doable because it, it's like it's just an imp i'm not gonna say impossibly complex but you just couldn't do it <laughs> so 
that's we solve it numerically we say not analytically there's another way to approach solving the three body problem so i've already given you a couple solutions to it right there's another way to solve it with uh, statistical mechanics actually basically you can calculate probabilities because it's pseudo random the if you wait arbitrarily long well, basically we figured out in the well, actually back step in the 90s there were other solutions we found um uh this this dude basically found another sort of solution analytically if it's in like a figure eight the 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 three bodies they do this figure eight motion that's also and then from that that opened the door to a vast a new bunch of solutions right for very specific cases it also should be stated that these solutions um basically never happen in nature <laughs> and then we the, the, they got really complicated um what do they call it a hypersphere they realized that you can kind of make this like equilateral triangle and you can kind of map it between the motion with all the dynamics you know if you have two angles of the triangle you know the third okay and if you if you actually wrap this this triangle around a sphere and watch what it does well if it's sort of if uh the two angles go to zero you actually you're at the equator okay and that's actually euler's solution and if they're the figure eight i think it was at the, at the pole no just at the poles that's uh that'll be lagrange's solution but from that the complex more complex ones they actually were much more simple to sort of observe in this hypersphere thing anyway that's another one that's another set of solutions and then there was the statistical mechanics because it's a pseudo random orbital dance point care point career however you pronounce his name he actually stated like just before this guy found this one i'm about to tell you about that this will like never be solved this is impossible to solve this analytically by hand and then this smart ass <laughs> from finland where else if you get a phd in finland they give you a sword just because why not so basically this guy from finland what is his name sunderland 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 eric sunderland it's just look sunderland okay and he actually found a general analytic solution he found a general that means it's solved it's just kind of useless <laughs> when i say a general analytic solution it's what you call a convergent uh, infinite series okay if you haven't done much math that will mean nothing to you basically there's just all of these um terms right and they converge and they get smaller and they diminish only problem is that sounds fine right only problem is there's 10 to the 8 million terms in this in the, in the solution for any given celestial mechanics problem so if you feel like you know right now that number which you couldn't for your little problem well you know <laughs> but you see it's, it's really useless that solution like so useless so we have a useless solution as well as like um like a bunch of other solutions that i told you about which are very specific circum situations which almost never happen in nature but the end body simulations uh, another way to put this how are we solving it it's an approximation okay so we're approximating i shouldn't say it's a solution it's a it's an approximation numerical integration it's approximating these things we can approximate it to sort of like very 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 accurately and that's what we're doing in n body simulations so thanks for watching with me guys i'm going to put that on the main channel hope you guys enjoyed that